The gas lobby in Australia has been lobbying against this news. They're saying it's fake news. They're saying it's it's wrong, it's false, it's nonsense. But they're the gas lobby, so that's what you do when you're trying to prevent yourself from being disrupted. Amazingly, if we replaced all of the water heaters in our homes, it could potentially be the equivalent of installing millions of battery packs. I'm finding this news hard to get my head around, but you know, if it's true, then my mind is blown and I'm really excited because this is really, really kind of a really interesting way to approach something from a different perspective, kind of to look at it, look at an issue and say, hey, how can we solve this easily and with far less money? And that's what this does. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. Got to say a massive thank you, of course, as always, to our Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and everyone supporting the channel this year. Really, I'm genuinely very appreciative for your support. It's been it's been a really crazy year, but with your support, it's actually been, I guess, emotionally possible, especially all the positive comments. I really appreciate those guys. And, you know, people who really see the future in a positive way, which I do, I think the future of the planet is going to be incredible. I really think that we'll, we're going to leave the planet in a much better place than what was basically given to us. So our kids, their grandkids, the world's going to be better. Key reason, renewable energy, electric cars, electrification of everything. However, looking at this, I mean, a lot of people say it's expensive, it takes time. But this thing here, by actually just installing a water heater, which is like a nothing thing, it can do the work of 2 million home batteries and save billions of dollars, according to recent research. Now, this is just based on Australia, by the way. If you include, uh, I don't know, American homes, uh, European homes, Chinese homes, uh, homes all around the world, this could be hundreds of billions. I don't know how what the scale would be because I don't know the actual, you know, what people are using in these countries, but I think a lot of them are using gas hot water heaters like we do primarily in Australia. So Australia's energy transition is obviously well underway. We're planning on hitting 90% renewable energy generation by the end of the decade. Six and a half years from now, 90%. Are we on track? We are actually. It's incredible. However, this could speed things up significantly. It could even put us above that 90% figure. 3 million households have rooftop solar and sales of medium-sized electric cars are increasing rapidly. I mean, we're at what, 1.9% last year? This year, we're at 7.2%. That means EV sales have more than tripled. That's ridiculous. I mean, what about if that happens again? We'd be looking at, what, 23% next year? Happens again? What happens then? We're at, like, 70%. That actually is, it sounds insane, but that is possible. It is possible when you look at all the EVs coming. I just made a video. It's like 80-something electric cars coming to Australia within the next two years. 80-something different models. That doesn't include models that we don't even know about, which I'm sure will come as well. So if you add to this, this possible change, which is very doable, I mean, it doesn't, it wouldn't take a big investment for people to actually do this, then we're going to speed things up enormously. About half of Australian households use electric water heaters. The rest of them use gas. So what's so great about electric water heaters? Well, I've been wondering the same thing myself because I've been hearing a lot of people say electric water heaters should be used. They're much better. And yeah, now I have an instant electric one. I find that it works really well. People believe, a lot of people believe that that isn't the case. A lot of people think, oh, it's electric water heater. It's not very good. Gas is better. Not actually true at all. Maybe it was true 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. Not anymore. Electric water heaters offer a cheap way to store large amounts of energy. It's basically a battery sitting on your wall. I don't think people realize that. It's in the form of hot water. A heater with a 300 liter tank can store about as much energy as a second generation Tesla power wall at a fraction of the cost. This is ridiculous. Like, how cool is this? I didn't even think of this before. I mean, I'm sure many of you even have. Let me know if you've thought of this. Oh, I'm going to guess that I'm, I'm going to look stupid here because I never thought of this. But I mean, it is. It's basically a big hot water battery. I mean, it's brilliant. 
Now, I know that there are a lot of people that already have solar and that have a hot water heater and that, and that use it for this purpose, but I never really thought of it as being this massive battery and thought of how this would be so advantageous for the energy revolution and just thought of how it compares to being a similar power generation capacity to a Tesla Powerwall. Now, it doesn't quite work out that way. I mean, it's not spec for spec. It's obviously not an actual battery, but it does have a lot of similarities. Research at the UTS Institute for Sustainable Futures has found Australians could use household electric water heaters to store as much energy as over 2 million home batteries, not 2 million, over 2 million of that kind. This could eventually save over 6 billion a year on energy bills while getting us closer to net zero carbon emissions. A lot of people think gas is clean. It's not. It causes emissions as well. In fact, it's pretty bad for you. Um, one of the key reasons why recent studies have shown that using gas in your house can lead to autism in your children, things like that. It's one thing where you think, oh, maybe that's something I should change if I've got little kids, possibly. A report published by RenewEconomy.com and funded by the Australian Renewable Energy Agency recommends that to halve emissions by 2030 and reach net zero by 2050, Australia urgently needs policies to rapidly replace gas hot water heaters with smart electric heaters. Smart heaters can be switched on and off in response to changes in electricity supply and demand across the grid. This means these heaters can suck up excess off-peak renewable energy, particularly from solar, and help us solve two problems at once. They can help reduce and eventually eliminate greenhouse gas emissions, and they can make our electricity grid more stable by providing flexible demand that helps balance out the fluctuating supply from energy sources. Now, actually, a thing worth considering here is that the only, the only grid in, a, in the world which runs almost all on renewable energy at some times, in fact, it did this for, I believe it was several weeks, almost only renewable energy in Adelaide. There's a couple of million people in Adelaide. So this is the only example in the world at a big scale like this, where there's a big grid running on only renewables. But what happened was the government started running around turning off people's solar panels. There was too much energy being fed into the grid from, from renewables and from solar. So this is kind of a cool solution to that because basically you could use your, your hot water system as a energy mechanism to save money because rather than having your solar panels turned off, you could use them to actually heat this water up. Now, if you had even bigger tanks, Imagine if you doubled the size of your electric water hot water tank, you could heat up even more water. So there are three main types of electric water heater. There's a conventional resistance heater that uses electricity to heat water directly. Solar water heaters use sunlight and electricity, but have become less popular as newer heat pump units have emerged. These collect heat from the air and they pump it into water. A heat pump uses three to four times less electricity than a resistance heater. A little bit like the efficiency of a heat pump in an electric car in some ways. Back in 2010, a resistance electric water heater typically produced around four times more emissions than its gas equivalent, which was terrible. However, heat pump emissions were about the same as for gas. That's because electric water heaters use a lot of electricity and most of it came from burning coal. But for most people now, that's not the case anymore. And in the future, it won't be the case at all. Of course, if in 2030, 90% of our energy comes from renewables, then, well, they'll be heated pretty much only by renewables. As we generate more electricity from renewables, that, of course, continues to change until probably by maybe 2032, 2031, it'll be renewables only. However, it's predicted in Australia that in the most likely outcome, a step change scenario, they say gas will become the most greenhouse intensive water heating option by 2030. By 2040, once the transition is completely made to renewable electricity system all across Australia, emissions from resistance and heat pump water heaters will be much lower than for their gas counterparts. In fact, they'll be virtually nothing. Water heaters can last 15 years or more. So the stock of heaters in our homes for the next two decades depends on what we install now. Replacing gas heaters with electric heaters should therefore be an immediate priority in our energy transition, 
says renewaleconomy.com.au. And I agree, it just makes too much sense, doesn't it? Renew Economy says that they looked at modeling of different water heating technologies. One of their models was a business as usual baseline where gas water heaters remain prevalent. In alternative scenarios, gas is phased out over the next 10 to 20 years. They said they found that replacing gas with electric water heating would not only help us to get to net zero emissions sooner, it would save us a lot of money. Billions of dollars, in fact. Gas is expensive. It's not going to get any cheaper. Abundant renewables offer an excess of cheap electricity that water heaters can help soak up. Embracing the opportunity could save over 80, over 6 billion a year on energy bills by 2040. Now, if you think about it, if you just put your your hot water system on a setting where it only charges during the day when there's excess solar energy, then it actually does function essentially as a big battery. The other benefit is the boost to grid stability. Solar and wind are now the cheapest technologies we've ever had for generating electricity. That's in the history of the planet and they're only getting cheaper. But to maintain a stable electricity system, we need to match demand with the fluctuating supply from renewables. Batteries offer a partial solution, but they're still relatively costly, especially in comparison to a water heater, which you need to pay for anyway. Electric water heaters offer a much cheaper way to store large amounts of energy and provide the demand flexibility that the grid actually needs. So Renew Economy says this, compared to the business as usual baseline, a scenario that emphasizes demand flexibility using smart electric water heaters could provide an extra 30 gigawatt hours of daily flexible demand capacity. That's the equivalent of, of over 2 million home batteries across the national electricity market. So here's how this all works. Since the 1950s, off-peak hot water has seen Australian electricity providers turning household water heaters off during the day and on at night to better match demand and supply. In return, customers received heavily discounted prices. In recent decades, we've moved away from off-peak electric hot water as incentives dwindled and more homes connected to natural gas. As we electrify our hot water, which technology should we embrace, resistance or heat pump? The answer, says Renew Economy, is both of them. The trade-off between highly flexible resistance water heaters versus highly efficient but less flexible heat pumps is an interesting one. Heat pumps use electricity and cost less to run. Where electricity prices are high or power flow is limited, using heat pumps makes sense. However, they have a higher upfront cost and are not suited to all homes. Many apartments, for example, lack access to suitable outdoor space. And because they use less electricity, heat pumps are offer less flexible demand. As renewables, particularly solar, increasingly power our grid, the ability of resistance electric heaters to soak up excess off-peak renewable energy is a huge advantage. With the right policies and the right market reforms, we will all benefit from a system that once again rewards customers with cheap, off-peak electricity in exchange for network operators being able to switch our water heaters off and on as needed. Now, the key thing to keep in mind as well as this is that we have to build out more energy than we need. For renewables to really work properly, we need about double the energy we, need, we actually use. There needs to be excess solar and wind built into the system and around four hours of energy storage. So there will actually be an excess of energy which can be soaked up at different times of the day depending on where you're based and it could be very easy to simply tie these water heaters into the grid in a way that we actually have digital devices that enable the grid to automatically charge these devices when there's excess energy and not charge them when there isn't so in all so in a number of ways this is actually a very interesting and outside of the box way to approach a very complex issue. I love this solution. It's brilliant. Great work on your economy. Thank you for sharing this with us. And as always, my friends, let me know what you think in the comments. Bye-bye.